Our next guest is currently ranked number 40th in the world in singles, has played in four Grand Slam singles and Grand Slam doubles all before her 17th birthday. Appearing on behalf of the Women's Tennis Association, the one and only Coco Golf. Welcome to Stephen A's World. How you doing, Coco? How's everything? I'm good, and you? I'm doing great, especially since you're here in Stephen A's World. Thank you for being here. I just want to ask you, you'll be 17 on Saturday. You're currently ranked as one of the top 40 singles players in the world. I just want to know how you feel. How do you feel about where you are in your career right now? I'm feeling great. I'm happy where I'm at, but I'm excited to go even further. When you talk about being excited about where you are, talk to me about how you feel about your growth over the last year or so. How do you feel you're progressing? Or what is it that you like so much about your game at this particular moment in time? Um, I definitely feel like I'm progressing a lot. And right now I like that I'm moving forward and being a lot more aggressive and definitely more confident in my strokes than I was a year ago. When you talk about aggressive, I mean, is that just you? Is that just your nature? Or is it, is it your dad? Because, you know, I've met him a couple of times. He and I talk from time to time. And he, he seems like the kind of person that will say, excuse me, you need to be more aggressive. Who does it come from? Yeah, definitely. Um, I have it a little bit inside of me, but my dad brings it, brings it out a lot. He always t tells me, don't step on the court unless you're ready to physically fight someone. So that's I, I like that. For I like I like that advice. Talk to me about how you're handling expectations at such a young age, because we saw you. You've had victories in your career over Venus Williams, over Naomi Osaka. So obviously expectations come along with that when you beat individuals of such quality caliber. Talk to me about the expectations for a second. Um, I mean, for me personally, there's always going to be outside sources, but I try to focus on what I expect for myself. And really, I expect for myself is just to compete my hardest and try my hardest every point. And um, I mean, I go on the court every match believing that I can win no matter who the opponent is. And um, I just expect myself to do my best and compete. And then when I if I lose, I lose. But I mean, I don't like losing. So I try my best right. to win. There are people that have been around the game a lot longer and in various sports a lot longer, a lot older that have a hard time weeding out the outside noise. No matter how much they deny it, they listen to it, they hear it, it affects them, it affects their performances from time to time. Do you believe that you've been successful in doing so and sort of tuning out the noise? And if so, how have you been able to do it? Uh, I feel like definitely I've been successful at it. I mean, there's been maybe one or two matches where it probably affected me, but I lost those matches and I said never again. So what I do, I just turn off my phone and just focus on myself. And ever since then, I've been doing a good job of tuning out um, what other people have to say. And I think that um, it's just more important to focus on your mindset, whereas if you focus on the media, it can really tear you down. And I think I've done a pretty good job at that. I've read where you uh, I've read where it was said that the best advice you said the best advice you ever received was from your dad in terms of your professional career. The best advice you ever received was that he told you it's just a game. It's just a game. First of all, is that accurate? Is that what you said? And number two, and more importantly, if so, how should everybody take that? I mean, if it, it, it's just a game, some people out there, you know, on the outside world that we're talking about, they want you to live and die with every match. They want victory to be the be all and end all. They don't want to hear it, it's just a game. What? How do you respond to that? So for I, I think that advice just depends on the person. For me, I tend to overthink and sometimes come into a match as life or death as people on outside watch. And I think I play my best tennis when I actually think it's just a game. And I have to remember that I have to enjoy it. And if I don't enjoy it, then I'm not going to get the results that I want. And I just go out there and just have fun. And even um, sometimes when the moments seem a little bit stressful, I really, those are the moments I live for. And mm -hmm. I just, and, and that's just the best advice I've ever been given. It's just, it's just a game. And I have to right. constantly remind myself that almost every point. Let me transition off the field of play, the tennis court of play, as they say, and ask you about this. What have you been doing with yourself since you've obviously had to live in virtual quarantine because of the, glo uh, the, the mm -hmm. coronavirus pandemic? Uh, what have you been doing with yourself? I hear you've been watching some shows on Netflix and things of that nature. What have you been doing with yourself, Coco? So I've been doing a lot of homework, a lot of Netflix and YouTube and um, a lot of uh, Marvel marathons, watching movies over and over again. 
I'm going to shock you. Are you ready for this? Can you see me right now? Because let me tell you something. Yes. You're in Dubai. I'm here in New York City. There's a reason, and I wanted you to come on this show today, Coco. Guess what me, Stephen A. Smith, guess what I just finished watching, Coco? One division. Uh, I see a cape in your hand, so I'm going to go with one division. There we go. I got even. I even got the cape <laughs> here. I even got the cape here. Let me, let me put this thing on here, Coco. You see this? I got one division because yes, obviously my daughter has me watching it. My daughter Nyla has me watching it, and I am a fan of this. I, I loved the series. What was your favorite part about one division? Uh, my favorite part is when she beat Agatha. That was my favorite part, and uh, I have a theory that she's going to be a villain. And I normally don't support the villains, but I'm going to support her if she's the you villain in the next Marvel movie. <laughs> You think Wanda's going to be the vision? I don't think she's going to be the vision, the villain. I think if she was going to be the villain, Coco, I think she would have tore up those towns. She, she, she would have, she would have killed them all. She could have killed them all, but she didn't. I think in the next Doctor Strange movie, I think she's going to accidentally tear up the multiverse, looking for her kids, and Doctor Strange is going to have to fix it all. Which vision That's did my you theory. like? Okay, which vision did you like? The one inside, uh, the one inside uh, uh, Westview or the one outside? Oh, God. I think I'm going to go with the one inside. I don't know if you've seen the memes of Vision and all the, they yeah. Photoshop gold chains and do-rags on him. So I'm going to go with the, the inside Westview vision. But you really think she's going to be, you think she's going to be e evil? You think Agatha got the better of her? I mean, obviously she handled her business there. But you think she's going to end up being a bad Scarlet Witch? That's what you think she's going to be? I think so. But I think she'll go back to normal uh, some point in the timeline. But I think she's going to be a villain for a little bit. All right, what about what about her love interest? We all need love, Coco, and Vision's gone. I mean, he's he's gone now. She's all by herself. What is she going to do? Who's she going to fall in love with? I mean, it, doesn't she need that? Yeah, she does. I don't know. I was crying when Vision had to go away. So I think we all need Vision, not just Wanda. You were crying about it? Yeah, I like Vision. I, I, I got to tell you. He I got to tell you. three times now. I, I, I won't admit, I won't, I won't, I won't say I was crying, but I must admit I was a little bit sad that Vision was gone. I, I must, I must admit I was a little bit sad about it. Your eyes were sweating a little bit? A little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. Coco, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you Good for having me. Good luck in the future. Me. All right, take care. Thank you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.